Justin from Germanico writes in, I want to build a real home theater PC and use it for other things like gaming, ripping, watching DVDs and Blu-rays, and running Adobe's Creative Suite 5. I'm going to be running Windows 7. What software will I need to rip and watch DVDs and Blu-ray movies, and what kind of case CPU and GPU should I pick? I'll be playing games and video at 1080p resolution, and it must be quiet. I was thinking of the AMD 6-core processor or Intel's i7-20, Germanico, and Quito, Ecuador. Now, if you were doing just a home theater PC and you weren't really looking for the gaming side of things, I love Intel's Atom G uh, CPU combination with NVIDIA's Ion graphics for a low-power home theater PC. I'm thinking you're going to want at least a dual-core system, though. And right. you mentioned that 6-core AMD processor. Uh, I think you're good there. It's the gaming part that could give you some trouble. We'll get to that in a second. Now, Patrick and I both use any DVD HD and Handbrake for archiving DVDs and Blu-ray movies. Uh, a lot of folks swear by the free version of DVD Fab HD Decryptor. Free is a lot less expensive than any DVD HD, and DVD Fab works pretty well getting around most content protection that we've seen. Yeah, I mean, the whole point, Handbrake basically actually rips the information and compresses it into a file format. It's a transcoder. Yeah, what any DVD does is, is get around the copy protection. Illegal in the United States because it's a violation of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Uh, unless you're rich and, and own a Kaleidoscape <laughs> system, but let's not even, let's not, that's a licensing. Let's let that one go. <laughs> um, for the rest of the world, though, it, sh it should be fairly legal depending on your local law. I like the AMD 6 core CPU, but I'm currently personally rolling with a Core i7 920 in, in my first high end home theater PC, or, uh, home period. It's the only high end PC I've built in years. Some apps in Creative Suite 5 are going to take advantage of all those cores. Pairing it up with at least 4 gigabytes of RAM and an ATI 5770 will do solid gaming, though you can spend a bit more and get more oomph out of your games. The thing is that the resolutions on an HCTV aren't particularly, they're not super high, and, and depending on the video games, you need to do a little bit of research to decide if you're into the super high-end video games, you might want to spend a little bit more on your graphics card, but the, for like 150 bucks, 5770 is a good start. Yeah, I'd say though, if you plan on gaming at yeah. 1080p resolution though, you're gonna need a much powerful graphics card than okay. that. Either like a 5850 oh. would be about the minimum I would go with, and I'm, I'm using a 5870 right now, and if you want to turn everything up, you're gonna need hardware like that. Don't don't kid yourself. <laughs> That's just. You, it sounds like you got the CPU part in in mind, uh, four gigs of RAM and so on. And also, uh, a lot of the home theater PC specific cases feature those annoyingly bright LCD displays in the front that we've seen. I've, I've had ones that I could actually read by across the room. Really, I, this I, ruins. I'm the kind home of done with the whole bright light thing, yeah. it, especially if it's in any way visible and distracting. That's just it, it, no. I'm not no. there. Uh, we've even some that required uh, proprietary power supplies yeah. to run those displays, and uh, or just the lighting systems in general. I, I just go for a solid desktop case, and uh, if you're going to go with an ATX motherboard, or if you want something that blends better with your living room, a mini ITX MOBO is a much, in a much smaller case can be done. And yeah. I, I have to say, mini ITX, it, if you can live with the limitations of the size of the motherboard and the features it supports, it's so nice to work on something that small and to be able to put that in and your power requirements drop, yet you can still maintain you know, right. high-end CPUs, usually one slot for the graphics card. You know, there you go. Uh, you can always check out Antec's Performance One lineup of cases for ATX MOBOs and the super uh, quiet. Those really, are super quiet. That's my other big requirement nowadays. Yeah. I don't want to hear the darn thing. <laughs> also, uh, they have an ISK series if you want to go with the mini ITX MOBO. That's also worth checking out. Yeah, was, uh, Antec. I, I really, I, I own a lot of Antec cases. Uh, one of them fell apart because somebody used it as a footstool. Aww. Yeah. I went with Silverstone last time around, and really? like except it? for I, I like it a lot, the overall design and the look of it. Uh, it's all aluminum, beautiful, but uh, it's a little little pricey. And one of the fans, it's got this giant fan on the top, and the uh, it's kind of a pain to remove the filter for it, <laughs> which is important in these summertime days where it gets so warm out. You got to keep the airflow going. Cats nicely, but, sleeping on the computer. But yeah. uh, thank goodness not. But <laughs> and I keep it off the floor too, so it's a little. You got to keep these things clean. They're dust collectors otherwise, but absolutely. Oh, you know, the one thing we didn't mention is a wireless keyboard and mouse. You're going to want a full-size wireless keyboard and mouse. Check the older episodes of the show. We talked about that a lot. Germanico, hope that one helps you out a bit. Coming up next, people, more fewer questions. But first, let's thank one of our sponsors, Gamefly. Gamefly.com, people. They are the largest online video game rental service. We're talking about over 7,000 titles, new, classic, all consoles and handheld. You want to get your game on for 16 bucks a month, actually $15.95 a month. If you're a Gamefly member, you can score one to four games at a time, keep them for as long as you like. Doesn't matter how long it takes to finish that game because there's no late fees, no due dates, and the shipping from your house to their place, from their place to your house, because you don't even have to leave your house to get on Gamefly. It's very nice. Look, you're done playing a game, send it back. Gamefly sends you the next available game in the list. It's really simple. 
You want to buy the game, click Keep It on the Gamefly website. You're going to get the game at a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. Want to try it for free? Techzilla fans get a two-week free trial. Just go to Gamefly.com slash Techzilla. Service 62 apply. Please see the site for details. And please support Techzilla's sponsors like Gamefly.com. Viewer named Bob in St. Charles, Missouri writes in, Whatever happened to piezoelectric chip cooling fans for PCs? Were they too expensive or not efficient? I heard a ton of hype about them in 2006 and not much thereafter. Just wondering, sign Bob in St. Charles. M.O. I was reading this, right? And at first I thought you meant Peltier coolers. They're thermoelectric devices made from two, basically two different metals that create a temperature difference when you apply a voltage to it, right? Oh, yeah. They remember they got sand, like you put a regular cooler or a water cooler on top, piezo cooler, and then the processor. And Peltier coolers are also called cold plates, are essentially solid state refrigerators or heat pumps. And they're pretty scarce these days. Frozen CPU sells them raw and built into water blocks. They're interesting for overclockers because they can reduce temperature below the ambient temperature of the air or water moving over it. They're great for setting records, but they are prone to creating condensation problems if not properly installed. And that's all I remember. You ended up yeah. with a very hot component and something that's basically developing frost. Yeah, <laughs> all at the same time. And, and then I realized you were talking about piezoelectric fans, right? Piezoelectric materials either move uh, when electricity is applied to them or they generate electricity when they're bent or twisted or as Wikipedia says, in response to applied mechanical strain, which is twisting. If you've used like a scanning, I want to say electron microscope or, or maybe a scanning problem microscope or a push, mostly a push button starter to light a grill, you've got your piezoelectric technology on. There was a pretty big push on some tech blogs, uh, probably around a press release. I, I want to say piezo systems was the name of the, pr the, the manufacturer. They still make and sell piezoelectric fans. They're pretty slick actually. They're single blade devices that flap, or to read the description on piezo.com, piezoelectric fans have a flat geometry and shed vortices of air from the leading edge of their vibrating blade, which means they flap. It's an interesting concept, and it's pretty much silent, but we're talking about a half a cubic foot to two cubic feet of air per minute. Your typical PC cooler is moving 40 to 60 cubic feet per minute if it uses fans at all, because basically they figured out they could create these gigantic monstrosities and actually create enough surface area where you didn't necessarily need a fan or an external fan or something other than the case fan to move air across it. Interesting idea, the piezoelectric coolers, or fans I should say, but not really useful in terms of moving heat inside most PCs. So they're still out. You can buy one from piezo.com. I don't know what it's going to cost you. I'm all about air coolers. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. sealed systems in general. Even just, better. Mm -hmm. Or less, a closet with an air conditioner and a filtered air... So, oh, you know. <laughs>